We asked you guys on Twitter to tell us your Dragon's Dogma 2 questions because we are so hyped for this game. If you enjoyed the first game then you may have been waiting over a decade for the sequel now, or if you haven't played Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen before and like the idea of slaying giant monsters in a big open world then you should be getting excited about this new game too. Also the first game still holds up very well so if you haven't tried it and want a new RPG experience I still do recommend it. Well you may have seen several videos on our channel already, we were lucky enough to play the TGS demo of Dragon's Dogma 2, so we have a bit of knowledge as to how the game feels to play, some various features and different things, so let's dive into the questions. First up we have one from Lewis Watchy where he says, I love that pawns were more conversational in the trailers, both with the Arisen and each other. Did you ever find them to be too repetitive, or was their dialogue dynamic enough to continuously feel fresh and alive? Also, on a different note, is their dynamic weather any idea? A cheeky two questions in this one here, but for the first part, I will say the very chatty dynamic of the pawns is a love-hate thing as a fan of the original. In the first game, it really did get old very fast, especially if you went on to do multiple playthroughs. But you also learn to love it because it's part of the charm of the game, and it's definitely better than if they didn't say anything at all. But from what I have played of Dragon's Dogma 2, the conversations are definitely rejuvenated and they do have a lot of new fresh things in there with some nods to the original. But I have a sneaking suspicion that after hundreds of hours of gameplay, if you're going to play the game that much, it's probably going to get very old once again. For the second question on dynamic weather, I actually wasn't too sure about this off the top of my head. So I skimmed back through all of my demo footage and in every single part, including after sleeping at a camp, the weather was always sunny and bright, with the only difference in weather being a story cutscene where you fight the red dragon who may or may not be Grigori once again. But this doesn't mean there isn't dynamic weather, it could just be that the demo version that we played may have had a set weather to be bright and sunny to allow for better capture and a better experience in that limited demo. And on top of this we know that in night time it gets extremely dark, so I am expecting dynamic weather but I didn't see it myself. So thank you for the question there Lewis and next up we have two questions which hit on the same point from Garrick and Akami where they say, how does combat fluidity compare in the sequel, specifically grappling and climbing larger monsters, if you got to experience any of that? And the other question is, how does movement and combat feel, specifically movement when climbing an enemy, I remember it being a bit weird sometimes. So this is a great question and a tricky one to answer given how much I actually got to play. In general the movement felt very good and fluid, particularly the thief vocation being the most agile and fast moving thanks to its skills. I have a feeling your vocation will play a large part in your mobility, especially with other vocations being able to hover, fly, dash or just straight up teleport like the mystic spearhand. But when it comes to climbing larger monsters I will say what I experienced felt very much the same, maybe slightly improved. I did get to climb all over the griffin and even fly away on its back which was an awesome new feature and I didn't have any trouble with the climbing of it or getting to a specific part of the monster that I wanted to attack and at the time I was only just getting to grips with the controls. I will say it felt very good, slightly improved handling but overall very similar. You will definitely want to have hotkeyed stamina recovery items when doing it and much like the first game you need to keep a close eye on that stamina bar when climbing. And yes to answer shotgun anaconda you can climb and stab them in the eyes. So thanks for those questions Garrick and Akami and for this next one we have a question from Dover King. They say are there any new classes or any type of crafting armor or weapons? So first up, the only new classes that we actually know of is the split of the Strider starting vocation into the Archer and Thief, effectively making them focus fully on either ranged or double daggers gameplay. And the other being the Mystic Spearhand, the new hybrid vocation of the Fighter and Mage, mixing together magic and melee for a sort of Jedi-esque class that uses a fully new weapon, the Duo Spear, as well as magic to paralyze and throw objects. Honestly, this new hybrid vocation has got me extremely excited and I'm going to be benching my previous favourite vocation the Magic Archer in favour of this new one. But for the second question about crafting, unfortunately I didn't see any crafting options at any of the NPCs I interacted with myself. You can still combine items in the menu, similar to how you could in the first game, but I didn't find any extra crafting options anywhere, and that also doesn't mean there aren't any, it just means I didn't find them. I did however find cooking within the new camp system that has some insanely good visuals for that cooked food, and I think they provide a buff to stats where dried meat gives a bonus to strength, defense, and stamina. So thanks to Dover King for that question, and next up we have one from Jasu where they ask, will there be a way to play multiplayer? 
the last game you could technically play multiplayer by using your friend's pawn, but they didn't control it directly. So it has actually been confirmed there is no direct multiplayer co-op, but the pawn system is making a return as it did before. You can fully create and customize your main pawn and then share it online, where others can then hire your pawn into their party, meaning the pawn that you've set up with their skills, augment, gear, and monster or quest knowledge will be shared with them on their journey. It is a bit of a contentious point in the community as to if they should have included full co-op or not. Some really have been wanting it, such as this comment from Shadow Dragon, while others have just wanted them to focus on making a single player RPG like the original. Ultimately, it's their vision and goal to keep it as a single player game with the multiplayer porn elements. This allows them to focus on making the RPG they originally wanted to, but with more budget, time, and better hardware. While I personally think co-op would be really interesting in this game, the porn system is a totally unique system, and so it's pretty cool to see it. Zuno, the director of the game, keeping to his vision for the sequel. So even if you are let down by the lack of co-op, you have to respect that the game will probably be better as a single player RPG for it. But let's hope in the future they bring back a new and improved version of Dragon's Dogma Online for all of our co-op needs and then everyone's happy. So thank you Jasu for that question, and next up we have one from that bearded guy asking, are humans and that cat race the only playable races, or are there more than just the two? Now while I can't categorically say if there will or won't be more, it's looking like these will be the two race options in the game, the humans and the new beastrons. Although interestingly, beastrons were meant to be included in the first game, but were removed due to scope and time restraints. It looks like the humans and beastrons will play a large role in the world this time, as humans Humans and Beastrons have their own capitals, with humans having Vermin, the Kingdom of Humanity, and Beastrons having Batal, the Nation of Beastron. Perhaps we'll start the game in the homeland of the race that we pick for our character, or perhaps hybrid vocations will be linked to specific nations, we just don't know yet. But it's looking like there is a big focus on these two areas, and there has not been any word on other races, so I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't any more. So thank you that bearded guy for the question, and next up we have one from Arinor Mephisto, where they say, what was your general impressions of pawns this time around? To be honest, I was actually impressed with them. I feel like they have been improved overall. Their voice lines were fun and interesting to listen to, and they would actually converse with each other quite well. They were also very handy in combat and definitely pulled their weight, particularly in my griffin fight, where you can see these guys are just helping me out every chance they get. I think it's important that the pawns are impactful to the actual gameplay, as these are your party members throughout the game, and are meant to make the game world feel alive as if you're adventuring with other people, even though you're obviously not. And I haven't played enough to categorically cast judgement, but from what I did play, I was actually pretty happy with them, and I will forever cherish this clip here, where you can see the pawn get absolutely ragdoll yeeted. So thank you everyone for your questions, and make sure to stay subscribed down below, because we're going to have you covered with plenty more Dragon's Dogma 2 videos.